go by. Well, here's our map again. Now that road that we took down the Calcite Springs Loop was closed. So we're taking the road now up to Mammoth Hot Springs. But we're coming up to the most fun part of the whole trip to me, where I get to play in the snow. Watch this. Look how beautiful. Beautiful. Here's something new. Snow in the in the sunlight. I haven't experienced that yet. I wish I were here when I see this at home. Here I fell down in the snow. <laughs> As you can see, I didn't fall. I fell on purpose. It's my first snowball. I'm gonna eat it. Watch out where the huskies go. Don't you eat that yellow snow. It's pretty good. Yep, I got some pure air here. Don't have to worry too much about steel mill pollution or anything like that. No. Oh. <laughs> okay. Now here we are, a little pinch. I'm running through the snow. Take a look at this winter wonderland. Beautiful. The first little animal, a little squirrel. Here he comes, trapping through the snow. We're trekking through the snow. Oh, wow. 
Yeah, that was a little cold seat right there. But boy, what a view. Well, here's our map again, and we're heading to Mammoth Hot Springs. But first, we're going to stop here at Undine Falls. Well, here we are at the north entrance to Mammoth Hot Springs. And this is, strangely enough, where we saw the most elk. They were just all over the place. Matter of fact, you had to be really careful where you stepped. Well, we really did enjoy this visitor center, and we wish we had more time, but we had to go on to the next stop. Well, we really weren't going to stay here, but we thought we'd just come in and take a look at the Mammoth Hot Springs Hotel. It was built in 1937 in the Art Deco style. It's open in winter. There's no air conditioner or TV, and of 97 rooms, only 67 have bathrooms. Well, here we have the magpie, who are members of my favorite family bird, the crow. So they're highly intelligent, and they come in two categories, black billed and yellow billed. They eat just about anything, including meat. Matter of fact, we saw a flock of them eating a dead coyote on the side of the road. And they can store their food for later by burying it in the ground. Turns out farmers don't really like them because they're hard on agricultural products. They damage their crop and they even hurt the livestock. They can pick at the wounds of sick, injured, and young animals until they die. That said, I still love to watch these endlessly fascinating birds. Now here on this little map, you can see the layout of the Mammoth Hot Springs area. First we went to the visitor center, as we saw, and then we looked at the hotel for a little while. But next we're going to see the hot springs themselves, the magnificent terraces, and the boardwalks all around. Take a look at this. And this is Liberty Cat, a dormant, 37 foot tall, hot spring cone. All these terraces are caused by flowing hot water. It seems that hot water doesn't have much oxygen, but it does have a lot of carbon dioxide, which allows it to carry a lot more calcium. The white rocks you see there are travertine. So the abundance of calcium in this hot water flowing everywhere creates these beautiful terraces. That hole that you see there was probably caused by a tree that died long ago, killed and buried by the deposits carried in the water. Ah! 
These boardwalks allow you to see things up close and personal. But it sure would have been a lot better if they weren't covered with ice and snow. This is Canary Spring right by Mammoth Hot Spring. Though amazingly beautiful, Yellowstone is truly a land of inner its or own risk. I think these angel terraces are about the prettiest places in the park. You have all these different colors caused by thermophilic bacteria, which are bacteria that can actually live in hot water, and the white travertine. It's just beautiful. And you'll see plenty of these people around. Everyone has a camera. You can say a lot of things about Yellowstone, and one thing is there are an infinite number of photo opportunities. Remember back in the Buffalo Bill Cody Historical Center? Yep. There it is, the big yellow bus, and here it is a little bit later in the 1940s, and a little bit later, the 1975 big yellow bus. Now we're about to see the brand new and improved version of the 1940 big yellow bus.
ice house. <laughs> no? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> A little, we're in our little ice house. <laughs> you got ice all down in your shirt. Look, I never saw a gator hat with ice with snow on it. That's the first. Like your other camera wouldn't work just as good. Yeah, but I couldn't take still pictures. Here, this map is just showing you the route we're taking. Those beautiful scenes that you saw alongside of the road as we're driving down here. Well, this map just shows you the route we're going to take as we proceed down to the Norris Geyser Basin. There's smell sulfur. And this is Steamboat Geyser coming up. It's interesting because it can't really be predicted when it'll erupt. Four days to 50 years. It erupted in 1991, 500 feet tall, shook the ground and roared like a steam engine. Well, this map shows the route as we return back the way we came, but this time we're heading out the west entrance 
for West Yellowstone, which is a town where we can find somewhere to stay for the night. Turns out we didn't have a bit of problem finding a room for the night. And here we are the next day, coming back in the west entrance to Yellowstone National Park. And that's the Madison River, which we'll follow for quite a ways. Well, this map shows our route as we leave West Yellowstone, go through Madison Junction, but this time head south. We're going to go past the places we stopped yesterday with our final destination today, Old Faithful. Heading for Old Faithful. And here's the Madison, here's the Madison River. This is supposedly National Park Mountain where Yellowstone as a national park was first conceived. There it is, National Park Mountain. Here we are at Fire Hole River. This is down from the National Park Mountain. And it's really still lots of people even in the winter. Holy cow. <laughs> That's beautiful. Some fishermen. Did he wave? No. Keep going. I don't know if you can see that, but that guy got out his camera and was taking pictures of the buffalo while he was fishing. Now this starts to become a really familiar sight. All these things that look like forest fires in the background, that's just steam from geysers, hot springs. I'm gonna check out another geyser. Or, I don't know what it is. We're going to check it out. Wow, oh, look at this, it's a tail. It was hot. It is boiling over there. That is so cool. Hot. I can feel the heat from here. We're approaching the upper. Lower Geyser Basin, which is not Old Faithful, which is the Upper Geyser. There it is. Wasn't there like a 
like that. Do we already pass that information center? We never did see it. Yeah, we way past that. There we are. Come and see this. Well, this is one of the most interesting spots in the whole park, I think. And here we're going to start to see lots of expressions of volcanism, as they call it, in Yellowstone's 10,000 geothermal features. Coming up on the fountain paint pots. <laughs> cool. And of those 10,000 geothermal features, no two are exactly alike, but you can broadly categorize them. Those that have lots of water, which are the geysers and hot springs, and those that have limited water, which are the mud pots and the fumaroles. Well, this mud in the fountain paint pot area is created from rhyolite, which is made up of quartz and feldspar. The acid in the steam breaks down the feldspar into a clay mineral called kaolinite. <laughs> Here's an example of a fumarole, and it hisses because gases escape through the hot rocks in the form of steam, CO2, and a little hydrogen sulfide. It hits the rocks and hisses. To me, these ravens are the most interesting of all birds. They're members of the crow family, and they're considered the most intelligent of all birds, maybe on par with a wolf. 
up to 46 inch wingspan and over three pounds. They have fascinating social habits and you can go on and on about them. Okay, we're gonna try and get a room here at the Old Faithful Inn. And there it is over there. There's Old Faithful again. <laughs> no, that's old. That's old. Now we're gonna try. Here we are coming down to the complex. I think that's it over there. I don't know. Well, you could sure say a lot about the Old Faithful Inn. It's got a lot of history, and it's a National Historic Landmark. It's one of the few remaining log hotels in the United States. The inn is seven stories tall, and the lobby itself opens up to six of those stories. Back in the early days, the band used to play up there in the crow's nest. They don't do that anymore. Our room won't be ready for a while, so it's back out to see some of the sights. Okay, here we are, making lunch at one of the, the middle geyser basin. And look out there, a whole herd of buffalo right in front of the car. Yeah, they're coming this way. <laughs> they're walking over here. They got up. That one there quick. Uh-oh, that one's getting up. Now when that one gets up, I'm getting back in the car. <laughs> Probably 20 feet away from the car. getting colder. Here we are eating lunch and in our car in a herd Tatanka. of buffalo. Tatanka. How's that for cool? Tatanka. And fire mine. Yeah. Come on. Another mom five. I was taking this footage because you can hear the buffalo in the distance. Hear them? We are going to see the Great Fountain Geyser. And the snow is melting. Get my polarizing lens out the roof. Look at that down there. Can you see that? I took a lot of video here because when we first got here, this thing was really shooting up about four or five feet. And it never did after that.
This was a really beautiful trail, and I wish we had time to walk along it a lot more than we did. We were waiting for our room to be ready, so we kept going back, and they kept telling us it wasn't ready. And here, looking into these beautiful, deep, clear, and dangerous pools. It's just really hard to describe how beautiful they are. I was there and I know that photographs just really don't do it justice. Yeah, we saw some bones in that last pool of water. And like I said, there's many, many ways to die at Yellowstone. Right on the other side, ooh, that's warm. The Great Fountain Geyser erupts from a pool of water in a spectacular display every 8 to 12 hours. We've been waiting 4 hours and 20 minutes now. So I'm going to cheat a little and show you this video I found on the internet. Okay, this is what it looked like on the day we saw it. Well, they had, a, they had the bones placed near the sign that said thermal area keep out. Yeah, I saw some bones by the sign. Yeah. Look, a geyser going off. Yay, we got it. But we did manage to see the white dome geyser go off, it's going and that like one's hard to predict. This is the center geyser, which is the chimney-like base. It has a four-inch vent, which is formed of the deposits of center. Steady geyser.
many times they can see your face for them while Yep, there it is. Old Faithful. Been hearing about it my whole life. And now we're about to stand in front of it and watch it go off. Old Faithful's not the biggest geyser at Yellowstone, or is it the most regular, but it's by far the most famous. Well, our room at the Old Faithful Inn still wasn't ready, so we took another trip up the road to the Midway Geyser Basin. And this is the Firehole River again. Well, just like the sign says, this is the Excelsior Geyser Crater. Now this one is different because in the 1880s, it erupted so violently, it formed a crater when it erupted. And it was dormant until the 1980s. It erupted for two days, only to a height of 20 to 80 feet. And now it's just a big hot spring, discharges about 4,000 gallons a minute. But what people come here to see is the Grand Prismatic Spring. It's about 380 feet wide and 160 feet deep. The only thing is you can't really see it from the boardwalk because you can't get up close to it. For that you need this shot, an aerial shot. Mostly what we could see from the boardwalk was that steam now that orange is this bacterial mat. And you can see here from the boardwalk, someone wrote in it. It's the thermophilic bacteria. And that's the water around the Grand Prismatic Spring. The Grand Prismatic Spring is the third largest hot spring in the entire world. Here's our room at Yellowstone Inn. Old Faithful Inn, rather. It's really tiny, but cute as a button. There I am. That's where I was. The sink, the bed. The door. It's very little, no bathroom. You can brush your teeth, but you can't go to the bathroom. We got no bathroom. We got logs. We got a radiator. But it's cool. It's like uh, Davy Crockett's cabin in here.
This is about how big cabins were back then, too. This is the original Old Faithful Inn. Been a lot of people in this uh, roof room for the last hundred and some odd years. Cool. 90 bucks and no bathroom, but hey. Look at the door. Here I am. It's the pioneer thing. Come tell me. And look at the door, the door latch. You see, those are the robes. Because you have to go down the you have to go down the hallway to the bathroom. Yeah. That's what they give you. They give you each a robe. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. big of them. Which I don't think you're gonna have a problem taking a shower because there's you're not gonna have an opportunity anyway. So we'll just take a sponge bath in here. Fine. Okay. Okay. And that's about it.